to see you again. <laughs> nice seeing you uh, again. And you have a lot to tell us about a new find that's come out and it's been documented already and I'd like to get some information on uh, what's been going on since last year. Well, if you were lucky enough to get the uh, MinRec Yes, in I November just got and December, it. Yeah, yeah just we, got uh, it. We had a great article done by Tom Moore in that, and Brian also, well, Brian who's filming it, came down and created a great DVD which is included in that edition. Very which good. Which shows some of our new Red River find. I'm seeing some pieces here that are really exciting. This one, that one. Let's start out with that. Either one of those. This particular piece really needs a stand made for it to display it in its optimum position. Oh, unbelievable. And, and it made it all the way over from there to here. Indeed. You guys Indeed. do a hell of a job of packing this stuff. I don't know how you do it. It's wonderful. Pieces like this are actually reasonably easy to transport because that does have a nice hard matrix. That's good. Yeah. Many of the pieces in this pocket are a lot more fragile. Uh -huh. the matrix and we yeah. actually have to stabilize the matrix in that particular I case. I see. Absolutely beautiful. And then one, let's go to this next one below it. If you, that caught my eye as well. He's actually the brother of this one. He came out just before. Oh, okay. So it's on the hard matrix yep, as, well. as well. Yep. Yeah. Nice solid Beautiful. hard matrix. Look at that thing. The contrast there. Yeah. Many people think it should be trimmed this way, but I tend to like having the. I kind of like it that way. The morphology of the whole yep. uh, area is so well displayed there. And there's a little bit more of the red stuff hiding yes. down underneath there too. So. Truly a magnificent museum piece. In the size of these pieces, Mike. Well, that was one of the uh, side effects of having John Cornish come to dig with us earlier this year. I see. Is that he managed to teach us how to get a few of the larger bits out. Yes. So as a result, we've got some very large pieces. Yeah, here just inside. unbelievable. Here. And these are actually only babies compared to the ones that we have back home. Oh, John my and God. John and our minor Bruce have pulled out a, a three or four pieces which are up around the meter by a meter. Wow. Uh, too big for two or three people to carry. <laughs> Incredible. And then you have this case here. This is a beauty here. Look at that. That one's very good at showing the different generations. Exactly. So you've got the earlier generation of crocot that's been coated with gibsite, mm -hmm. which has then caused an, another generation of crocot to form branching off those. Mm -hmm. And there's actually probably about four or five generations in there if you look closely of just branches, then branches growing off branches. You see that? And then the yeah. final generation came after the gibside events, so it's still got its colour and luster. Yes. Whereas the ones underneath have got the, the coating over them. Because it's in an isolated remote spot that not many people get to, it's more untouched than it is touched. Exactly. There's more ground that's never been looked at. So um, interesting what you guys were telling me this morning about the isolation of all this. It's really interesting. It is yeah. fairly isolated, not uh, to the point of being primitive, but yeah. it's, it's a four and a half hour drive away from a major city and it's, it's, it's in the bush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. Hey, hi Adam. Thanks a lot for letting me come on in and share some of the story. Yeah. Hi Dave. Hey, how Pleasure you doing? to see you again. Boy, yeah. I heard you were down there. That's great. You know, this has truly been one of the most unbelievable experiences that I've ever had. And as an enthusiast in the mineral world, yes. to be able to see this type of an occurrence in place. Really? It's like nothing that I'll ever see again. I'm trying to recover some of the really nice things that were sitting there just at a finger's touch away. Holy cow. It was very much of a challenge in order to remove some of the specimens. Uh, it, it was truly just an unbelievable experience. Uh, we had some great help having Bruce Stark down there as the mine manager, being able to work with Bruce. I see. It, we were a, just a wonderful team, and it really, everything worked out just terrific. That's fantastic. I don't think that there's ever been anything that's 
shown this type of development of this type of structure exactly. within an open cavity system before, wow. let alone at this unprecedented size. Yeah. Yeah. To drop those plates down too gently, as you've seen in the video that you've taken, these things are very fragile. Exactly. And because of that, utmost care needs to be truly taken in their recovery. Ah. So it needs to be a very gentle letdown of releasing the plates from the wall down onto a cradle that we can then slide the plates down into an area where we can remove them. The plates themselves, the, the, the coverage on the crystal walls is so exceptional. And I like the idea, personal, I like the idea of breaking these things on out as big pieces and taking them down. It allows the customers to see a truly unprecedented crocoite specimen, the likes of truth? which have never been seen. Exactly. And then we can always come behind and we can trim them later down yes. into perfect pieces once yeah. we've gotten them out of that crazy mining environment yeah. of underground. The uh, MR article, the Mineralogical Record article, and the DVD exactly. that came out it was a very out, yeah. nice introduction to it. That's and right. as continued filming and development of the pocket, I think that people will be very fascinated by the story as it develops. That's great. Thank you very well, much for this you. opportunity, Dave. Appreciate really appreciate it. it. Thanks Have a, a great time. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Adam, good. thanks a lot. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Tim, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? Uh, most of this stuff is, uh, most of these Amazonite Smoky Quartz combination specimens were found over the last, I want to say, two or three years. Okay. Um, most of them are ones that when I release a pocket, I'm not able to get the entire pocket done. So I, when I finally finish it, they're new, yep. but they're from older pockets. I got you. None of them are really on the shelf, so I'll go ahead and show okay. you a flat that I have over here. Yeah. We're calling this pocket Ooh. the Lucky Monday pocket. Wow. Uh, it's found on a Monday that. of all times. This is absolutely beautiful with the smoky quartz is jetting out of this, clustered with the Amazonite and albite in between. This is a, a wonderful specimen. Now, when was this found? 2011. 2011. Wow. Look at this. Incredible. Oh, this is unbelievable. I can't believe this thing. This is unbelievable. It, and yeah. now this is out of the 2011, boy, oh, what a yeah. pocket that was. Or, it is the yeah. Lucky Monday pocket as well. Oh. It took me a long time to clean and prep and get this ready for market. But exactly. You take your time on a rock like this. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> These are pretty much the best out of the entire. Ooh, look at this. The entire find. That's fantastic. Real is this sharp. gypsum? No, it's uh, sylvite. Oh, it's sylvite, okay. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Look at that color. Uh, here's an, an astonishing one as well. Oh, look at this thing. This is absolutely beautiful. The color zoning in these. Look at this. Look at that color. Absolutely beautiful. And this one's neat and special in that it has the three colors. It has the teal, oh, purple, and right. blue. Yeah, it really does. Well, that's exciting. But I heard rumors that a topaz find was made. Yes, uh, those rumors are true. We, uh, we were able to acquire Colorado's most significant gem find pretty wow. much ever. So, uh, wow. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and turn that over to my dad, though. Okay. So he'll Very talk good. about it. Joe. <laughs> you Hi, know, Dave. I, I hear see. you've got a, a, a very, very important group of crystallized, beautiful, colored topaz I from have, Colorado. Colorado. I, I have a very special find, and it's very significant. I didn't find it. Okay. I got to give uh, credit to Rick Fredard and Gene Kalman, and okay. basically a couple of really good field collectors in Colorado who did some uh, research mm -hmm. and have rediscovered Ed Over's lost topaz wow. locality on Pikes Peak. We don't know exactly when he discovered yeah. this area, probably late 40s. Oh, so it's okay. like six, 70 years or so okay. since. And as you know, he passed away in 1963 right. when he was on a, a prospecting trip. And so wow. this is one of the places that uh, got lost. 
And uh, he was notorious for not recording the locations. Of course, right. he intended to go back yeah, and absolutely. work them. But, yeah. you know, he found uh, Red Cloud, Wolf and Ice. Exactly. He did the Green Monster Mine yeah. uh, He went with Montgomery and, with the Red Cloud. Arthur Montgomery. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons this pocket is named the Tribute Pocket uh, in, in memory of Ar Arthur Montgomery, Ed Over, and George White. And George Very White good. was an avid topaz collector as well. So yeah, I need to show you these. Yeah, you oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is All right, this is actually one piece. Okay. Day, but it's in several pieces. All now, right. Tim fitted it together, but we are just leaving the fragments as they are. I see. Uh, it came in at over four pounds. Wow. So this is the top of the crystal. Ooh, and you can see, look at see the beauty of that. It's got these, yeah. these this refraction with the colors. Yeah. Holy cow. It's you very can, unusual because here. of the etching. Oh, it's fabulous. And every piece out of the pocket shows similar etching. Yeah, it's totally etched all the way around here. Mm -hmm. So this is part of one crystal. This, that's right. This yeah. goes to it. Tim can show you the fits. I can't. I but see. We're, we're not going to do well, that. Yeah, now, we're not going to do it. But these yeah. all went together. They all fit together. Now there's only, there were only a few really good intact crystals. Let's see this one here. That's the first that's one he took out of the pocket. Would you believe that? When it's he a saw jewel? that, I'm surprised yeah. he made it off the mountain. Yeah, literally. He's literally getting a little up there in ages too. Yeah, he got you know. a parallel growth one right here next to it too. Yeah. I love the etching in these. Isn't that they beautiful? Sit beautifully etched. And the color is the color, super. gorgeous color. Well, that's great. I really appreciate seeing this. And everybody that gets our What's Hot in Tucson, they're, they're going to enjoy that. And that's what it's really all about. Well, it's and, an and educational I thing. That. Yeah. I appreciate that because you're right. That's how we get uh, people to uh, be able to see some of these things where others, yeah. otherwise they wouldn't be able to. You share knowledge. That's share paramount. Mm -hmm. We do yeah. that. Yeah. So I thank you well, for doing it. Thanks today. a lot. Appreciate Congratulations it. Congratulations yeah. on seven years. in here you're doing your show again and it gets bigger and bigger each year and I know you have a lot to tell us what's taking place yes, and if you can give us some pointers because your show is really starting to make a move in the whole event in Tucson yeah we've been extremely pleased the day before our show opened um, our exhibitor in the uh, tent right behind us Christus Mai that sells Brazilian crystals sold his entire inventory Wow the day before the show started. That's wow. why the venue's empty. That's his van. Okay. He's on his way back to Brazil for Carnival. Wow, he's going to have a ball. <laughs> he's going to have a great time. And then uh, we have an exhibitor in the International Fine Mineral Building who uh, sold one of her pieces for six figures this wow. year. Good. Again, the day the show started. Wow. Last year, Marcus Budil, who was with us for the first time last year, yes. sold his entire inventory out except for his Tanzanites. Oh. And that happened, I think, six days into the show. So we've been wow. extremely pleased. But one well, of the I things we've you. also done, just in closing, is um, we started last year a lecture series with Mendat.org. That's right. Yeah. This year we had, uh, they're doing another lecture series a um, couple days. Yeah. And then uh, we've had Kevin Brown from Arkenstone and Stanley Keith from Magma Chem Exploration did a, a lecture series last night which is also something that attracts people, gives people something to do in the evening. That's right. We have a, a wine and cheese reception that precedes that, and it just worked out really well. Yeah, it's re really neat. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dave. Right. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave, good to see you again. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Let's start with this jewel right here. Here we have a magnificent jemmy terminated tourmaline, but it isn't just another tourmaline. It actually has nine crystal faces at the termination there, and the bicolored effect and the jemminess. This is what you call a perfect miniature tourmaline specimen for anybody's collection. 
lovely zoning of the colors. And beautiful color combination with it, the pale blue on the top. That's and right. Pink, yes. Look at that. <clears throat> okay, here you have a double terminator tourmaline. These are Afghanistan uh, specimens, by the way. Uh, what's unusual here is that you have the uh, green cap with this crystal, but here something happened in the formation. The, yeah. the chemical solutions were different in this case because the green is in the close to the middle of the specimen. And here it goes into a light pink here. So it's double terminated, double terminated. So that, that makes it for an unusual yes, thing. Very, it's what you call unusual. an oddity. Notice this thing like here, it's green here and that here pink. On yep. this side, it's all the way up till here, it's green. Yes. I'm noticing some of these fluorites coming out of uh, Pakistan now are starting to pick up more richness of color. That right there, it has yes. a little deeper color yes. to it. Almost, it almost re reminds me of something from the uh, from Europe, uh, yes. a little bit. That's yeah, from I don't want to overemphasize that. Color, yes. Yeah, that pinkish color, and uh, that, that caught my eye because it, it it has three colors actually there, and I thought that just was a very very pretty thing, and I like that. Now here's another uh, morganite here, and what's f fine about this morganite is it has the real good deep color. Yes. And the good thing about these morganites from this part of the world, Afghanistan, it's stable. Okay. Because certain morganites from a couple of the mines in San Diego County, mm -hmm. they're, they're sensitive to bright light, I especially see. sunlight. This is what you call a very, very fine large specimen and it's good for several reasons not only a fine mineral specimen but the uh, feldspar crystal here uh, uh, pavino, twin. pavino twin yeah it looks like and a pavino twin, twin. that's right there you go and then you have the aquamarine in here so you have a little of everything but one other, other another unusual thing is that you didn't scrape these off. This no. is the way it was found. Yes. Yeah, and, it, and it's all in one direction. Yes. Yeah. What happened in the ground, how that happened? Very interesting. Mm -hmm. But what I like about the whole specimen, this is a type of specimen that fit into a general collection in combination, not only for a general mineral collector to have it, but it's just a beautiful thing to have. Now, we have a magnificent kunzite here. Yes. This is a very unique piece because I have been working with spodumene from this location since 1974. Very good. Okay. And I've seen crystals the size of your arm. Wow. And they could be two colors and three colors, but they're totally opaque. They're cracked. They're badly damaged. But to find a piece of um, this size, this clarity, Zero, zero damage, and so many different colors. She mm -hmm. shows you colors everywhere the you turn it, the it zoning. Ma magnificent. It's really very magnificent. Yeah. Color, the, you, you see the, the, the bottom uh, side of mm -hmm. the crystal, it seems a little yellowish. Yes. So it's not that there is a yellow light underneath. That's it. right. That's the color of the crystal. Yes. Makes it yellow. That's and then right. on the top, we have, a, uh, in the middle, we have a purple, pink, and then we have green. So mm -hmm. when we change, uh, turn off and on lights, yeah. it changes to different right. colors. We have named this uh, specimen, it's been named the White Dragon. Yes. And the reason for it is it was found in the year of the dragon, the Chinese year of the dragon, okay. I'm part Chinese. Oh, so I that? like to remember that always. Yeah. And also, because the albite in the front is shaped like a white dragon. It really is. Sitting right at the base of the crystal, you like it's guarding yeah. the whole crystal. Yeah, look at you that. You have a white dragon Just like in the a dragon. Front. Absolutely. So we think every uh, unique piece should be named so it can be recognized when you would remember it by its name. Right. For example, like we are Ashraf. Yeah. I mean, Aisha and Arif together is Ashraf. So <laughs> I think that's know. hopeless. I don't know if I'll break it at time. <laughs> Guys, keep up the, the, the work and thank you. Really thank appreciate you. seeing thank you, your Brian. beautiful pieces. Thank you, Mustafa. Hi, how are Dan. you? Not Talk too to you early. 
uh, earlier, and I remember you in uh, uh, in uh, Munich. In Munich, yeah. exactly. So you got uh, a booth here. That, that's exactly. Great. Is very, this your first year? It's my first year. It was very nice to see you, and yeah. you know, I'm really excited to be in Tucson for the first time. Yes, this was the show that I really wanted to do, like for years and years. I was Good waiting for, for this day. This pocket has been found just like four months ago. Okay. And these blue quartz were coming for the past three years, like, but nothing major, just a little small crystal. Okay. We were very lucky to get a really great piece from this pocket. And this, we call it very rare. This is found from where the tourmalines in the district of Pech in Nuristan, Afghanistan. Okay. Normally tourmaline come from this location. Mm -hmm. The good thing about this is, you know, the color is really deep, intense blue. Yeah. And you have tourmaline crystals oh, all around okay. it. Like, That's you know. what's caused that, yeah. And you can see the crystals of tourmalines like all around so. it and the deep color blue. Yes. And uh, blue you know, indicolite tourmaline. And it's like a hackamine. You could call it a blue yeah, hackamine, yeah, really, the yeah. crystallization Isn't and that everything. The truth? I'd like yeah, to the see that too. That's yeah, nice. This is really great piece we think because normally you get the quartz on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. But what makes it special on this piece is, you know, on top of the crystal, a doubly terminated smoky right. quartz have grown with albite. You got it. Mm -hmm. And both the quartz and the yeah. tourmalines are doubly terminated. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you see the colors, yeah, it's, it's a four gorgeous. colors all the way. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And when was this found? This was found like nearly about 15 months ago. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Th this has really grabbed my eye. <clears throat> this brookite. I've never seen such an assemblage of brookite crystals it, on matrix exactly. and size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll take a few of those out with Wait, Bryce. Um, Bring that one out. Sure. Start off with this. I mean, if you see this piece, there's more than 30 crystals yeah. of brookite grown on quartz, on a bed of quartz, makes it really special, the so quartz. So many of them with the So many of them and undamaged. Yeah. It's like spray of brookite it's on the quartz. Unbelievable. And then the large, huge crystal of brookite, exactly. which is, makes it so special together yeah. with the small ones. Fantastic. This is, this is something really special, because yeah. normally this is very rare to get yes. brookite with fading quartz. That's right. You see the... Brookite like crystal is shooting from the fading quartz. Not only that, the color. It's the color a is color. really red. Wonderful. And if you turn it around, all the crystals are fading quartz. You will yeah, see like sure. the crystals are grown really. That's right. You see the spray of the brookite you know, all over. Miniature. Look at that thing. And if you move it around like yeah. from the front to back, you see like you know all crystals of brookite yeah. and yeah. really deep red color. Yeah. Jewel of a thing. Mm -hmm. No damage, no broken. It's all around you see like, you know, crystals of brookite grown yes. all together. Very good. Mm -hmm. ah. This is the, the biggest size we ever found in brookite. You know, wow. the crystal, this is the biggest crystal. It's Incredible. really huge, really razorly sharp terminated. Oh, that's fantastic. And if you see inside, it's like a tail of the fish. Yeah. From the bottom, it goes, you know, thinner and then it gets thicker and thicker. Fabulous. The size is really huge size. So you feel this is the lie? I haven't seen that. I've never time. seen like never bigger seen than that. Like you know, that, this, yeah. for the size of it, this is yeah. the biggest ever okay. found. You know? For the shape, we think it's the world's best piece, and the growth is so amazing that it's unimaginable how come a two different species or two different kind of tourmalines can grow together. Mm -hmm. Doubly terminated, Beautiful. unrepair, blue cap. Beautiful. These are just gorgeous, mm -hmm. these tourmalines that have come out of this pocket. Mm -hmm. Is this still open or is this closed? This uh, the pocket is still open, but it's yeah. not producing nothing at all because oh, it's been two okay. years, like nothing has been coming oh, out. Like, okay. you know, last pocket was found like two years ago. Wow. And um, I think this was the best piece of the pocket that we thought it really is special because of the growth, two different type of tourmaline grown together. Yeah. One is diamond termination, one is a group. And then, in fact, both doubly terminated with a blue cap. Yeah, what you call a complete specimen. Exactly. And at the end, I would really like to show one of the best major brookite piece that we found. Okay. We think is the largest single crystal of unrepaired red brookite on Matrix. Wow. Because we've been working on brookite mines since 12 years, since it oh, came out. And 12 uh, years now. Exactly. Seems like they came out two years exactly. ago. Exactly. You know, fast the time And goes. we think, you know, to have such a huge red brookite crystal. Wow. 
unrepaired with a chloride course. Look at this thing. That's something really special. Oh. And if I put a light over it, yeah. you see the color, the redness on it, like. Beautiful. Look from the back, thing. you can see the color. Yeah. Absolutely. Beautiful. The size is really amazing to have such oh, a yeah. large crystal of red brookite on matrix. You know, or you're right about this wiring holding it down. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. Can you imagine trying to wrap that thing and just Absolutely. taking your chance and chipping it without no doing this? Absolutely no It's a chance. very good idea. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is really something. Yeah, these are really extraordinary mm -hmm. things. Unbelievable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Appreciate for coming over. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Putsu, how are you? Good, Dave. Nice to see you again. So for 2013, what's hot in Tucson? What do you have to show this year? Well, um, I've got some great radioactives. Oh, okay. Um, a nice hot night from Washington. Now this is catching my eye here, this show bite. Oh, yeah, the show Can you bite. bring that out? Absolutely. Yeah. This is superb. Now, have you had it checked? Do you know it is that mineral? I have not had it checked. Okay. I've had a few people suggest that it was. Okay. Yeah. What you need to do, because it happens, it's commonly uh, happening with a lot of the uranium minerals. They think it's this, they're almost certain it's it. And they have even mineralogists say it's this ends up not being what any of them said. So you do have to be careful. You can take a piece like this, right in here, not here. Have an XRD? Yeah, you need to really check that. Okay. And if it ends up being that, very superb specimen of it. Now I see this big azurite that looks interesting, then you got this guy. Yeah, the azurite and the uh, ram's horn selenite I picked up on the Mindat conference in Morocco this oh, fall. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a very good program now. What they're doing is contributing. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, they're uh, putting together programs in different parts of the world where we go and uh, actually visit the mines, go mining ourselves, they have a little gem show for us, mineral show to pick up some rocks and whatnot. Very good. Super educational, lots Very of fun. Very much so. And there's a lot that contributed to over the computer of new mineral species and, and they found out this has happened to this species, it's no longer that. Yeah, it's a very important thing that's yeah. uh, uh, coming about. Erythrite here, it's a cobalt mineral. And what's nice about this, the needles are not in the vug. Right. That's what's so fine. It's a beautiful burst on the outside the uh, uh, cavity, and uh, this is just a lovely specimen. And that's a solid erythrite here on a plate of quartz, I guess it is, from Morocco. And uh, that, that's a jewel. That's yeah. a superb example of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I went digging erythrites there, but found oh. crust on a rock oh. is all I could find, oh. you know, when I was digging. That is something. No, that's a lovely piece, a nice big burst. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I like that. Good. This was my score at the Munich show. Very good. It's a fluorite with phenakite from uh, Shangbao, China. That's a killer thumbnail, Thank what they call yeah. a killer thumbnail. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, this is kind of a dodecahedron fluorite, too. Yeah. And you have this burst of this uh, phenakite. And having that combination, it, rare enough, let alone a perfect thumbnail. Yeah. You might get a, mate, a big rock like that and a little of this and a little of that on it, but this thing here is truly an important thumbnail. Yeah. You know Ralph Clark? I know of Ralph Clark. I don't know. This should be shown to him. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I would have that in a heartbeat if I was a thumbnail collector because yeah. you'd display it just like that and have that burst coming up like that. No, that's a yeah. superb I, thing. Wait, couldn't, that away? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I From couldn't Zoom put it down. When I, when I picked it up, I couldn't put it down. Oh, I don't blame and, you. And most people, it seems, can't put it down yeah. when they pick it up when they hold it. It's, it's I was going to put it in my pocket and walk out of the room and <laughs> go to the restroom. <laughs> you can trade me the ring for it. Okay. <laughs> Kutsu, once Dave. again, thanks a lot. Always Keep great up the to good see work. Alina, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, I talked to you a little while ago, and we're very happy to meet you. And we're very interested in interviewing a female that is actually 
having a mineral business and, and you're head of this room here with all the beautiful minerals on display. That's a, that's a very nice tourmaline and um, it's from um, Afghanistan, I believe. This, Can you shoot that all right through the glass? Uh, Brian? This is from it, Vietnam. Oh, it's Vietnam, it is. okay. It's a real light color compared to the ones I've seen. Yeah, okay, it's Vietnam. Okay, what you have here, this is unusual because usually you see it one or the other or it's on matrix, what have you. I, I can honestly say, I can't remember, I've seen two well-terminated well crystals just kind of like that. Quite unusual. Sometimes you'll see it where it's way up here and mm -hmm. you can see uh, the separation there, but I, th I thought that was very, very unusual. This is one that caught my eye many years ago when I first started out doing this. Okay. I thought it was very aesthetic and yes. this was one of, one of the ones that got me started out. Good for you. Yeah, well you have good taste because I caught that right away when it, I came in the room. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. This is that beautiful, what I call it's not official. I always call these real turquoise type blues, Nile blue, Nile green, if they're the, the green side. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, that's a lovely miniature tourmaline from Afghanistan. And it's that color it grabs you. As I saw the kunzite, I saw that up, the upper shell. And, uh, that's a, it's a beautiful little tourmaline you got there. These florets were all all came out in the late 60s, early 70s. They're from out Tennessee. of they're all they're all cave and rock, yep. and um, they are from Herb Povovich's collection, and they haven't okay. been seen since 1974. So wow. this is the first time that Very these good. are being shown. That's great. Yeah, they have some lovely pieces in there. And Dave, I have something interesting you might want to take a peek at. Oh, okay. Uh, I was up field collecting, and on Peterson a while back, and the dogs had run off not far from sunset to chase after a jackrabbit. Uh -huh. And I decided I would pick around in an area of the mountain that I'd never really picked around before. It didn't seem to have a lot of amethyst and not much good quartz. And I had found these little tiny biotype mica balls and pockets and greasins, if you will. And I figured, oh, I'll pick through these and see if I can find anything. I've yeah. never really been over here. Yeah. And I was chipping around and nothing really was coming out and some yucky exploded quartz. And it was coming towards sunset, and I had this little pick. I picked it in to one of the mica balls, and something fell out, hit my shoe, and it was just like I thought a chip of smoky quartz. Yeah. And it turns out I had picked it up, and kind of it shocked me when I saw the yellow, gold, and green. And um, it could potentially be what we think is a zoocyte crystal. Um, that is really something. And is this area, do you know, is known for the zoocyte in the past, do you know? You know, I don't know that it's been uh, uh, it's really, crystal anyone's too. really been able to substantiate much of it. I know that there was potential um, rumors from the turn of the century from miners that had seen maybe sprays or summoned massive. Yes. But uh, no real terminated gem crystals, and so that was a real, a real treat. Yeah, it's a perfect little crystal. To have something like that Oh, it's a jewel. Out. Congratulations, Chris. Thank Good you. Work. Yeah, Thanks. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good I'm very luck. honored. I appreciate it very well, much. Well, thank you. Welcome, welcome. welcome I'm to in the for home. a surprise here. I, I think understand. you are. Yeah, the house Already I see these unbelievable cases and the lighting and everything. Yeah, the But cases I've heard are... so many compliments of what you've done to this place. For me, when I look at minerals, I don't like to be doing this. Exactly. Bending all the way down or yeah. looking up. Exactly. And I also find it awkward that when you're trying to display minerals on a top shelf or a bottom shelf, you have to find minerals that work in those spaces. That's right. You can't just put any mineral all the way at the bottom or any mineral all the way at the top. But mm -hmm. there's this sweet spot, and yeah. that's what I think of it as, is yeah. this area right here, it's at eye level. Mm -hmm. For anyone who's you know 6'4", they can see right into the case. Right. And if you're 5'2", you can see right. right into the case and see everything easily, fast, without any trouble. And then the lighting the was lighting probably the, the yeah. biggest consideration. Yeah. Um, the best mineral case in the world that could be built would be one where you have 
25 mineral specimens and they're never ever going to change. They're fixed, they're in the same spot, they're never changing. You set them all up exactly where you want them mm -hmm. and then you build the light to light those specimens. Exactly. That would be the best case in the world. The yeah. thing is, the reality is you can't do that mm -hmm. because if you, if you'd have to have a static collection and collections are dynamic. They change, things goes in and things go in right. and out. And for me as a dealer, they change constantly. Exactly. They change from day to day. I have to take things off that I sell and yeah. put up different minerals. Right. So I needed a way to be able to light any mineral in any place, any way I wanted. And so what I did was I created I, I created these channels yes. and I scalloped them into the side yes. so that a lot of times, you know, you notice the light head is protruding. Exactly. These don't protrude. They don't do so that. if you're standing in front of the case, which yeah. is the optimal view, right. the lights are a lot less disturbing. They're, That's they're, they're less so of an true. eyesore. That's right. And they're not blinding you and shooting That's you in right. the eye. The lights are really neat. They are. Oh, there you go. They're connected with an audio jack, which is wild. Holy cow. Now, do they use these lights and other media? No, they're medias? custom designed for, for the cases. Yeah. Holy cow, that is incredible. And the other thing is the articulation. You know, in the, in the other cases, from a, any set point, you could yes. get about that much of a degree and rotate. Um, but these, I can go 90 degrees and rotate. So I can oh. go, I can hit anywhere. In the case, I mean, That's if I want to hit straight down, I can I can come out of the wall and I can go straight down. There's different color lights. Yeah, I noticed that. So we yeah. have two different temperatures. You know, lighting. We up until now, the old fiber cases are running at 4,100 Kelvin. 4,100 Kelvin gives you sort of the best balance for what you can get from one source. So you have a, a source that's providing you 4,100 consistent and it looks good on greens, it looks good on yellows, it looks good on reds, but it doesn't look phenomenal on anything. And it's a little blue hint to it on the overall case. Here, what you have is you have, if you notice, there's like a yellower, the light has a little bit warmer color, a yellower right. tone. Yeah, sure. And that's the 3000 Kelvin. And then I have a bluer tone, which is 5000. I see. When they mix and they just bounce just around. Balance, the wall, just it just merges in. It, yeah. it, it balances yeah. out and it just gives you a nice, homogeneous, even light. But... Yes. It also gives me the ability that if I want to stack, you know, if I want to stack uh, three yellows on this tourmaline, to, because the green and, and the, the, the pink in yes. there is going to come out more from a, a warmer temperature light, I can yeah. just plug them in there and give that more concentration Incredible. in just that area. It's well, great. while we're standing here, you've got some magnificent yeah, things in this case. In Let's talk about too, rocks absolutely. right now. <laughs> yeah, that's great. This specimen here, is the finest small hand size I've ever seen of this Aheliodor from Russia. Uh, the color, uh, the, the, uh, the etching, the balance, and then you have the side parallel crystal. This is a killer yeah, specimen. It's a beautiful piece. It's a wonderful piece of this type of material. I agree. Yeah, I really like this guy. I just got that out of the Ukraine, which is amazing. I it see. came from that same pocket that. Um, uh, the cover, you remember we had the cover with the three of them on yes. it on the MR not yes. too long ago? It's yeah. from the same pocket as the one in the center. It's this really, whatever yeah. reason, that <clears throat> that one pocket formed more steep and more subtle etchings. You know, the other exactly. ones are heavily, heavily etched. Too heavily etched. And heavily what's etched. good, you can see right through it. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's a killer. Then here you have a simple quartz here. What a magnificent thing. Isn't that fantastic? I just love that. This is great. I mean, this is this is what's being produced now. I mean, there was oh, one okay. small pocket yeah. in um, from Inner Mongolia, and I mean, it's this prosim quartz. Oh, that Mongolia is really coming up with stuff, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's really wonderful. That's a beautiful thing. These are nice. These um, the lolingites. Lolingites. They're lolingites with uh, small arsenopyrites on top. Okay. Beautiful. Look at that appetite. Beautiful. These ilvites are wonderful. This See one that? reminds me of like a trident or yeah, something. Yeah, just beautiful. This is fabulous, this azurite from Sonora, Mexico. 
Yeah, I love yeah, that. It has piece. beautiful balance. That's from the electric. They call it the electric blue yeah, pocket. Fabulous. Wonderful thing. Yeah. And the Jonas. It was like Jonas's. Oh yeah. Not easy to find. You know yeah. a little bit about Jonas. Uh, I know. <laughs> they have to tell you a story sure. <laughs> later. It's really interesting. And see, and this is an example of a case where I've left the top white, the sides are black, the bottom's white, yes, and the risers are white. And it's nice because I can set off, you know, like the, One the celestite the and the fluorite That's and the quartz right. set off against the black, exactly. whereas I use the white risers to set off like tourmaline. Yeah, exactly. That's fun. It's beautiful. All right, so let me show you some of the nicer things that I have this year. Very good. This is a neat specimen. Oh, this is from. Um, isn't that beautiful? Calcite with the quartz. Calcite with quartz from the Inner Mongolia locality. Boy, they're coming up with some great things. Yeah. That's beautiful. Got incredible what twinning. A, I mean, the, the it's two a crystals. piece of art. Yeah, very sculptural. Ah, fantastic. Love that. It's a delicate pink, isn't it? It's a delicate pink. It's yeah. a mangano, a light mm. mangano. But what's capturing is the shape. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, this, it looks like an M or a it's W. It's unbelievable. It's got wow. a fun shape. Yeah. This is really fun. Oh, look at that. Because it's like Beautiful. a square. Yeah, a rectangle. it is. Yeah, topaz. Wild crystal. Yeah. Beautiful. Is that Pakistan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that habit shape the like habit that. Is totally it's wild. unbelievable. The geometry. You can see is right into it. It's wonderful. And then here we have uh, Inner Mongolia again, doing some wonderful things. Oh, These there fluorite you go. Yeah. On lolingite. Isn't that something? It's beautiful. Oh, that's highly modified. Isn't that mm -hmm. a beautiful crystal? A little group. And just Isn't that nice? There. Yeah. Perfectly like that. Absolutely. This is a wonderful thing. This is probably the best example oh, look at from that. the locality. Holy cow. It's mimetite, isn't it? It's mimetite from Australia. God's sake, I've never seen one this big yeah. like this. There was about five in the pocket that were of yeah. any sort of. Uh, yeah. At, at first glance, I thought it was well. It's, uh, it's pyromorphite. pyromorphite. The, the low, what's so exciting? And then I saw this up here. No, no, no. It's not pyromorphite. It's a mimetite. And that's like seven inches by six inches by three or four thick. But what a specimen! And this is from where now? Australia. Australia. Boy, the good for them. Line. That's a hell of a thing. Yeah, it's a wonderful piece. Love that. Fantastic. Uh, this year, we have uh, an announcement, and that is that uh, Fine Minerals International was able to acquire the Ross Lilly collection. Okay. He's uh, a very he, Ross is a dealer and a collector, and he is he's known for his fluorites. He collected right. the finest grouping and assemblage of fluorites and other related species from the uh, Illinois area. Yes. Cave in rock, etc. Right. And the collection is just outstanding. This oh, is look the poster that. piece oh, for the Tucson the show. Man. Beautiful. It is. Yeah, I recognize it. Yeah, they have look it very wrapped like that. I say. And they have it like this. Oh, that's fantastic. I think they might have it like that. And I mean, oh. there were there were tons of these. Uh, uh, not tons of these, but I mean, there were tons of specimens that came out right. from Cave in Rock. Oh, and fan. people don't realize how fine Cave in Rock is because they never saw they it. They never the, saw it. Yeah. They never got the, the yeah. chance, the opportunity to see it. Yeah. And I mean, for this to come out, this is the 1% the of the 1%. It's yeah. absolutely pristine. It has no damage. And it's got that absolutely. outrageous coloring. Yeah. It's just, and the color changes, I mean, depending on the light that yes. you hold it in. Now this, I think last year, you had seen the Pedinera pocket that came out in 2011. It was a pink pocket, yes. and there was one specimen about this big uh -huh. that had a, a group of pink crystals. Okay. We had filmed it here. I'm 99% I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, there were two important pieces in the pocket. This was the other one. It just was returned to me. It was on a specimen about this okay. big around and about that big. Okay. And it's... Uh, this is a lovely object. 
Beautiful. Look at this thing. Oh my God. Let's get this out yeah. so everybody can okay. see it. All right. Oh, look at this thing. I can't believe this thing. There you go. Yeah, I got it. Isn't that crazy? That crystal penetrating. <laughs> look at this thing. It's like one oh, was growing God. and the yeah. other one's growing, and they said, hey, you should yeah. get out of my way. <laughs> A rocket. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. And it's this giant, like, two yeah, and a half or three-inch lapidolite crystal yeah. is just crazy. That's fantastic. Sure is. Here, let me show you yeah, here in yeah, the light. Right. You can see. Yeah. It actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a, a blue. Oh, yeah, 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 you crystal. can see. Yeah, you can see some blue in and there. Absolutely, like the right in there. Right you can there. Right see a little purple in there. Okay, yeah, you can really see the whole blue zone in there. Yeah. There was one pocket of smoky quartz oh. in, uh, in Chamonix, France, oh that is God. known mainly to the locals. Look at that, even a Gwendol back there. And it's there. got a Gwendol sitting right on top. I mean, this- They're A total jewel. This object is oh beyond, and it, the perfection doesn't describe it. Yeah. It's, the luster and the quality- No that, cracks running through it. Yeah, it's, it's flawless. That's that's magnificent. I mean, the color is just and this. the color. There was one. It's got everything you want. I think it was um, circa two thousand or two thousand two, yeah. and it was it yielded about a dozen specimens. And this was held by the dealer collector who who helped mine them, uh, a gentleman named uh, Astier from France, and it just came out of his personal collection. I mean, this thing oh. is. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's the epitome Have of that Have you seen this quality before? Oh, never, never. It's crazy. It's a faultless piece. It's a faultless and piece. And it has such a variety of shapes in there with the window and everything. Hold it? Yeah. So these are two, these are two pieces that are uncommon to see Ooh, in this shape and that. size. This oh, is that's wonderful. Lidocotite. Wow. from Madagascar, and the same thing from Russia. Oh. And so, you know, I've never seen and this And they're both a uh, uh, Lidicoite type. Yes, they're both a Lidicoite Fantastic. type. And they're from two totally different localities. This one here, I've never seen a, a, That's a triple bad. crystal like never this. Never seen anything like that. And you can see the similarities, but you can see the differences as well. Very much so. And they're just, they're wonderful examples of the yeah. species. So Dave, this is an odd place to show you a mineral, but yeah. it's not on display because it's on hold for a client at the okay. end of the show okay. who's coming in on the 14th and 15th. So it's not gonna be out in our exhibits, but I, see. I thought it would be fun to capture. Good. Um, it's for me, the finest example of the species that I've ever come across. Wow. You can see. It's a big vanade night. It's a giant venated knife. Holy, knight. I've never seen a bigger piece. And it's a plate. Even close to it. Oh, it's a plate. It's okay. a total plate, and it's totally perfect. Oh. The crystals, I mean, you, you don't understand the, the size, but... Oh, yeah, they're huge. They're huge. Oh, yeah, you get the... They're between half an inch and, and up to an inch. Wow. And it's just a gorgeous thing. How they got that out without breaking. I have unbelievable. the clue. Unbelievable. But yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely pristine. And I mean, I've, I've never seen anything like that. Never. So I wanted you at least to, to capture it. I'm so it glad because, you caught this. Uh, yeah, because we'd have missed it. And it's it. probably just going to disappear. Exactly. Here's a couple of new pieces, Dave. All right. These are really interesting. Look oh, at this. look, isn't that beautiful? For it's the hematite names. inclusions. Yeah. Beautiful. From Orange River in South Africa. Okay. And you can see yeah, this man. one, they're from the same place. Same place, okay. But this one has more it. saturated in there yeah. or something. And this is more just, just a beautiful. hint. Beautiful. Orange. Like. Orange color. You can see them well, against they're the wonderful. white. Yeah. Now, this thing is wonderful. It has one of the nicest sculpture-esque properties. Wow. Fluorite with the quartzes. Double terminated quartzes with it. Is this African? 
It is Chinese. Oh, it's Chinese. Okay. Yeah, this is Chinese. Because I haven't seen it with these quartz. I haven't seen anything like that. Wild. Never seen anything like that from China. But it's incredibly it's, sculptural. Oh, I mean, this, this octahedron with yeah. the penetrating quartzes and the... Unbelievable. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing. Because this is something very, very unique. So there was a collection called the Fioravanti Collection that I purchased last year. Oh, and it, it was an Italian okay. collection. Okay. And so. I had sold the whole collection to another dealer. Astro Gallery of Gems bought the collection and they've been marketing it. But wow. I had held back a number of pieces that were for me. There, I got it. And this is a unique thing. It's a, it's like a, you know, a selenite. Yes. With sulfur grown in, in between, between the blades, and then sulfur crystals. Yeah. Just associated with it, and I mean, it's just the totally off the wall. Different. Out of this plant. Very different. It's like the fishtail selenites from Mexico, yes. but with yellow sulfur crystals. Exactly. It's fantastic. Never seen anything like that. Yeah, either had I. Yeah. Wonderful. There's a handful of great golds in the world. This is Ooh. one of them. I love this piece. Beautiful. It's all crystallized and it's it reminds me of a seahorse. Is that an eagle's yeah. nest? It's a uh, mockingbird. Oh, mockingbird. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, mockingbird one. That's fabulous. It's got great <sighs> crystals oh. over here and the luster is just... It's just a beautiful piece. And what's so nice, it's so solid and yeah, heavy. Yeah, uh, it's solid and heavy. Heavy crystals. Gold. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it has that appeal. Killer. Yeah, it's kind of like a seahorse. A little bit. Yeah. I had that seahorse nugget years ago. I remember you that. Remember that 40 ounce mm -hmm. seahorse nugget? Oh, that's a lovely thing. I'm also looking forward to the expansion of this house that you've done. Yeah, the expansion yeah. of the house has been, wow. I mean, it was a, a major endeavor. We started, we started, we were approved in March of 2012, and we needed every minute of time to get it ready for this year. Exactly. And unfortunately, there were some delays in March and April, and we didn't get to break ground until May. So this room is the same. Yeah. Although we've opened up this doorway to enter into Lawrence's oh, gallery. Yeah. This <laughs> corridor didn't exist before. You exactly. Know, I had the offices on this side. Okay. And the oh, there's kitchen. the kitchen. There's the kitchen okay. that we've had. This is a new gallery room and it's Absolutely equipped with beautiful. some of our new showcases. Exactly. Making this wall here. Um, and then we have the fiber optic showcases lining the walls over here as well. Oh, yeah. And the new entrance, more, I think the more the flow of traffic, is going to come from this direction. I see from the because uh, end you know suites, yeah. the in suites yeah. is straight ahead here. Yes, and so we've created a whole landing coming okay. up, and you know people will traffic through here, yes. come up the stairs, I and see. come into this big and this will be the, the greeting place. Okay, and I'm not just saying this to flatter you, but this is a major event in Tucson, and for. What's hot in Tucson, this, this is the most outstanding achievement I have seen in Tucson, especially for our program, to announce it to all people that get to well, see this and thank personally you so much. come here. Thank really you so mean much. That. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Up the good day. Good How you see. doing? Good to see you. Well, you we're look back fabulous. Again. Yeah, I'm hanging in there the you best I can. Yeah, I'm Great. doing okay, Great. keeping busy. And by the way, there's a lot of new stuff we're seeing, and that's exciting. That's great. That means one thing. Minerals are doing very, very well. I looked at these two cases a few minutes ago, and I'm impressed for two reasons. Not only you have beautiful minerals and you have beautiful color, the arrangements, but you know how to use the lights. Just to give you an example, here you have these two tourmalines, and uh, is that Himalaya or is that pa uh, Afghanistan? This is Paprock, yeah. That th that's what the I thought. Himalaya there, that's the Himalaya. And I right. thought that was Paprock. I wanted to hear it from you, though. But look at where you have this. Where did you see a beautiful Himalaya glow? You right. don't see that. See, and you got the light coming right in there. Now that they have it, but a lot of people don't know how to light the specimen. You, you, you took these and you got the lights right on them, and they're very impressive. And that's a gorgeous matrix specimen. You can't argue that. No. It has the white all by 
light, the quartz, and that beautiful uh, bicolored uh, coloration to it. So uh, that catches the eye. I it, do have to give kudos to my son, Matt, because he sets up all okay, the cases. Okay, so good for him. He's going to hear this possibly in what's hot in Tucson. Uh, so go on. I better, I better he, say that he did the display. He better not edit, <laughs> he better not edit it out. I would, I would be disappointed. Now, the uh, Heliodor, this, uh, these Heliodor, there's a few Heliodors in town. And uh, that's nice to see a Heliodor like that. Where is that from? Um, is this that particular, No, this particular one is from Madagascar. Okay, Madagascar. Well, it's hard to get those, and I always point them out. Uh, it's something you don't see in every case. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed this one. This is uh, very unusual. Yeah, I noticed it, and I assumed it was uh, Russian, but you tell me it's from Brazil. Okay, and that's a new pocket. Well, it was found uh, about three months ago, the okay. piece. I, I don't think there were many crystals. Certainly this was the largest, finest one to yeah. come out. And what's good, and I, I want to make this clear, when it's yellow, this has enough yellow to be called Heliodor. These green ones are green burl. They shouldn't be calling them Heliodors. When they're green, they're green. That's mm -hmm. green burl, but that's that's very fine. I have to mention it. This is the epitome uh, of aquamarine to me. I always love to see a single crystal, and here you have a beautiful blue crystal, smoky quartz, and you have the albite, and uh, that's just a beautiful specimen. And you know, people just kind of take these ones, even small ones. All of them are important. Now's the time to get these type of specimens. How long is this? I'm glad we don't know. No. But these are important specimens. Right. I love that. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful croquite. I love that. But that, that has a little more strength to it. Now you got a rare thing up here that uh, I could... Yeah, you uh, might want to see Legrandite, this one. Yeah, but the the Legrandite yeah. with the Oelia. Yeah, now that I'm not familiar with and I can't remember seeing it. This has got the... Uh Oileite yes. bug here, in and the that's top. the whitish, creamish. Yeah, it's a white green outside and outside light, but it's yeah. very rare mineral from there. Very interesting with the limonite. Yeah, that's a real rarity. That's well, it's a good nice specimen. with the with the Combination. as well. Yeah, and yeah. having the complete yeah, bugs of them, so they're the crystals. I can honestly say I don't remember seeing that. Uh, white mineral before. And uh, in the outside light, they get a greenish hue to them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a good rock. It's a very interesting. Yeah, yeah it's very rare. Sure. And it's pretty. It's heavier than it looks. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's not 55 ounces, huh? but it's heavy. you got quite a bit of gold in there. Yeah. Okay. It's a snow cone. Yeah, snow cone. This year is the year that we've seen these wonderful azurites. In this case, it's malachite crystals, very pseudomorphic after azurite. Right. Yeah, look at this. And it's a Chateauian type of, of uh, malachite. If these were all banged up and chipped and damaged, they cut this and they make beautiful Chateauian right, calves right, out of it. Right. So always the, uh, the Chateauian type of uh, malachite is worth much more than just plain massive uh, malachite. But this is a needless say, a beautiful specimen, wonderful crystal. And I, I'm glad I saw that because we have seen some wonderful azurites, but still the azurites are the premium thing. Right. The malachite, it's nice to show them a nice right, plate of right. malachite as well. Yeah, this one. Yeah, when do you see a white one? It's got a nice twist and it actually has a little a speed little, on the back. This? Oh yeah, isn't that true? That's polar urals. I mean, I have to be honest with you, I, I can't remember. It, 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 if they're around white, you can call white. There's a hint, hint of a smoky running right. through it, just a hint. But this color to me is rare. I have not seen this color in Gwendos, to be honest with you. It's always smoky. Right, right. Very good. That's great, yeah. But you've got the gem Gwendol here mm -hmm. on, with the quartz on the matrix. Yeah. When you think of it, what do you, what you do see, it's very rare compared to just getting the Gwendo, is the other type of crystal habit in a cluster of the crystals. Right. But it actually on matrix like that, yes, I would have to agree. I just Because I've seen Gwendos, but the whole bottom is quartz crystals or massive quartz on the bottom, but on a totally different matrix, it was a schist of some sort. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, no, that's really neat. And you have to get this in a way where you can get the reflection to see that. A Gwendo the there. That is a Gwendo. Yeah, it's very gemmy. You can even oh, see yeah. the quartz is oh, on, yeah. on the other side yeah. that are coming up against it.
But I'd never seen one, you know, on the on a foreign matrix right, like right. this. They're usually growing. Yeah, I've seen them on quartz crystals. Yeah, but this is different. Something. Very good. Yeah. Very nice. But these orthic clays crystals are very hard to get when they're complete. I mean, really rare. And I thought, I don't think this, but I have to see it out. It's all I saw like that. I said, I gotta get that out of the case. That thing, if that's complete, it'd be a hell of a thing. Not that it's a fine specimen, because they're hard to get. Right. I mean, orthoclase, that's a gem crystal of orthoclase, right. that's not plain old orthoclase. So anyway, uh, that specimen's still a very fine specimen. Right. The fact that it's a transparent yellow uh, orthoclase crystal. Very tough to get that. So that's a rarity more than the common mineral that it is. Anything it's, else you have to show us? Um, I did have a couple of uh, okay. interesting pieces back here right. that maybe you'll want to see. Yeah. These are some sweet home rhodochrosites that we have back here on the desk. That, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, this really caught my eye, to be honest with you, a uh, few minutes ago. It's just a beautiful mineral. I mean, think of it. How many minerals are this color that jump out at you with that coloration like that? It's a screaming color. Now, the, the crystals are dull and everything. They're not the shiny ones. Ones, but if you don't have a rhodochrosite, I mean, get, get another one. See a way they're disappearing Especially now? Especially for the size of the piece. Oh, yeah. You know? It has the size, the color. No, that's a beautiful specimen. Got some golds, but I thought you might enjoy this nugget. I always I, I'm, I have a weakness for nuggets. Now, a lot of people, oh, yeah, <laughs> and crystallize like that. I love heavy nuggets. That's a beautiful nugget. Australian, of course. Right, right. Western and, Australia. Yeah, and I might point out the Australian nuggets, as average, have the highest content of purity of gold. They run like 93 to 97 percent. That's why it's so golden looking. Right. A lot of people don't know that. And uh, 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 this has the aesthetics to go with it. It isn't just a blob. Right. It has right. character to it. No, that's a wonderful nugget. That, now, there are something that weighs a lot yeah, of weight. That's, that's, a, that's a heavy nugget. Yeah. 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 Gold. I love good golds. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Thanks, Mike. Dave, great good to job. see you. Always Brian, beautiful cases. As usual. Yeah. Hang loose, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ian, how you doing? Good to see you, David. Another year. Nice seeing you guys. Well, David, this year we've uh, we, we've had an exceptional time since we last saw you in Munich. Um, we bought, uh, we've had six good new collections since uh, since Munich. Very good. Two, um, okay. two super ones out of uh, um, Namibia. Okay. And uh, the the most important one was a. Um, Incredible collection of French minerals put together by Gilles Lemonge okay. of uh, Paris in France. Okay. And uh, Gilles, over a period of his, his collecting life, put together one of the most important collections of French minerals ever assembled. This is one of the real classics from Gilles' collection. It's a. I've been spying this here, Japan Law Twin, and then you got this. Boy, that is wild. Isn't that a beautiful thing? But it's from La Gaudette in, yeah. in France. And quartz is a very common mineral. Yeah, exactly. But France. But, yeah, but the yeah. French La Gaudette specimens of, of quartz Total, are some of the finest. Yeah, totally ever. off the wall for our locality. But it's a lovely piece as well, too. Yeah. And France wouldn't be France without. That's right. Great. Beautiful fluorite. Chamonix yeah. fluorites. Look at that thing. From Mont Blanc. Look at the color. Beautiful, intense, deep color. Yeah, in the it's last kind of years salmon we've, seen, pink. Uh, we've seen some great fluorites from Pakistan. Yeah, but uh, they don't have the color, the they don't intensity. Have the color. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The French ones are still by far oh, the best. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a small, there's actually quite a large coal mine in um, called Lemur in uh, the south of France. Yeah, get the glasses and there. this mine produced some of the world's finest tetrahedrite crystals. And yeah, bornelite. It is te te so you can see here is a huge oh, yeah. tetrahedrite. Oh yeah, there, there. Partially coated with bornelite. And this is from where? It's a coal mine. A coal yeah. mine. Would you a believe coal mine that? They produce some of the world's finest sofa soaps. And is that with siderite? Yeah, growing on siderite. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's that, that's lovely. This was one of my favorite pieces from. Looks like it snowed on that rock. Yeah, there. look it's at this. Oh, snow God. cone. Look, look at that. Isn't that neat? Look at that. 
And I hope that Very Brian will pick up the, the color in here. Yeah, the purple. Because the purple is just yeah, exquisite. Just beautiful. And the complexity of these crystals. Holy cow. And this is from a mine called uh, La Vonsante in, um, in, uh, in the south of France. And it really did produce exquisite fluorites, which again, you know, we never see them you on the international see them? market. Isn't that the truth? That's wonderful. Look at the just color of that shade of blue. What a beautiful miniature. Yeah. It's from the the famous, color just screams at you. Yeah, it just wonderful. jumps out at you. It's from the famous Le Berc mine in the Pyrenees in the south I of France. I see. Okay. Just a super little miniature. With quartz. Wow, oh, what a shading of blue. This is the classic Saint-Pierre, oh, the massage. Uh, the size of these crystals of siderite with the quartz, and they're kind of smoky here back here. That's, that's fabulous. Oh, I like that. And not only the size, the complexity, and the leafiness. So look at that. If you get the light to reflect off of that, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, that's a lovely thing. Yeah, that caught my eye while we were talking there. I saw that back there. How about something incredibly common, marcasite? But France mm. produced probably some of the world's finest crystallized marker seeds. And again, oh, we okay. never see them on the market. And uh, Gilles had a super suite of these. Look at that. Look at the coxcomb oh, yeah, crystals yeah, of that. Exactly. Yeah, any of these coxcombs, they're, they're like this. So the smaller of these, but to get this size, isolation of them. Oh, yeah, that thing is superb. From France, of all places. Mm -hmm. You know, our, uh, some of our... Midwestern states produce uh, Marcus, I bet nothing like this. The mineral world is full of surprises. You know, right. I never knew that France could produce hematites like this. You know? Would you believe this? This is Isn't from Isère in the south of France. You see that? But who ever heard of hematites never like this heard. from France? You never know, heard of it. It just doesn't come yeah. on the market. First time I've ever seen one that I can remember from France. Other localities, that's different. But France, forget it. Never knew, never knew it came from there. France uh, produced the world's finest oh crystallized stars. Oh my God, I can't believe these. From the Saint Lucie mine. Holy cow. I, I, wasn't, I thought they were barites. I didn't look at the label. I thought they were just kind of barites in here. These are mind boggling. Yeah. Totally. Never seen anything like that. I have seen some, a large one. I said, I wonder if they have that mislabel. I couldn't believe them. they would be like this size. The Smithsonian, I think I saw one a long time ago. But look at these crystals. <laughs> Look at that, Gwendo. Are you ready for that from here? It's rose fluoride on the Gwendo quartz. Okay. But I've never seen what it before. What a combination. Before. What a combination. It's a perfect Gwendo, too. Yeah, that's a killer. This was one of my favorites. It was from yeah, a location Ooh, that I'd never heard of before. Can you believe this? Is it a Everyone? malachite on the quartz yes, like malachite that? malachite on smoky quartz. Two common minerals. Where do you see that? Yeah. Where do you see malachite sitting on smoky quartz crystals? Yep. Never seen it. Just a little beautiful specimen. Yeah. See, it's important that you're pointing these things out. Perfect miniature, too. It's one of the other collections we were lucky enough to pick up was the Wolfgang Wendel collection out of uh, Germany. Okay. And uh, Wolfgang had put together one of the finest collections of larium minerals ever assembled. Very good. Yeah, this is That's a huge a Look one. at this. Oh, yeah, these are rare colors. Unbelievable. You'd never think in a million years unless you knew this. That's yeah, coming from that locality. And one yeah, of the big fluoride. shocks from, from Larian was finding some of the, um, the real quality oh. fluorites. Truncated. Look at this thing. There. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, they call that truncation there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And these came from the Maria mine, which was part of the Larian mining set. And, oh, okay. Uh, some, of the, some of the fluorites from there really are quite important. And we'd, we'd never had them before. This was a shock. I'd never had a good one of these in my whole dealing career. And uh, we bought this from a, another collection in, in Germany. And uh, these, believe it or not, are, are the Bornenites from Would you the uh, Huttenberg this? collection in uh, Huttenberg area in Austria. And they're always coated, they always have this, this surface alteration. Yeah, the it's second, the best one we'd ever had. It's never a, seen this a really before. really good European classic. Yeah, because I, I didn't, when you started handing it, I didn't know what it was. 
It's the only born and night I've seen with this coloration of uh, yeah. alteration. That, that's amazing. This is from your era. You look the at famous that. pocket of these. Yes. Came out in the, yeah, the 70s famous, they came out. Oh, yeah. Look at that. On the quartz, the fluorites. Pink at that. Classic. This well, is one we just bought in from Switzerland. I this see. is absolutely magnificent. That's a jewel. That's the epitome of that mineral. Look at the twist in that. And it's just flawless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get the these, the, the luster, flawless, and a, the beautiful twist. This was something, again, we just bought this from a collection in oh Europe. My it's a, God. just a giant oh, of a pyromorphite. A pyromorphite the size, I can't believe it. This is Idaho, isn't it? Yeah. This is, I've never seen these size crystals. They are huge. Absolutely. When you got this, did they say this is as large as they've seen? I've never seen larger crystals than this. This We've is We've had ever seen a pocket, but I've never had, I've never had bigger crystals. Oh yeah, the crystals are huge on this. So how's everything going? Well, everything is going fine. We've been busy accumulating new, really, really great specimens to show you, and yeah. That's a beautiful piece. Crystallized leaves. Yeah, I mean, with a lot of times now with the prep um, possibilities you have, we extract the golds and see if the structure goes through so we can expose the most and best of the gold. That's right. So that we create a really attractive specimen. Yeah, so, yeah it's yes, a lovely that's thing. That's a really perfect, nice piece from California. Perfect hand-sized specimen. Yeah, I like that. This caught my so, eye. This yeah, is this really is a really, 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 really great specimen. Yeah. So. It's very fine, yes. very fine leafed, and it's, it's exceptional. Yeah. With the plates and the and leaves, and then you have the quartz on the right. side. It is just so attractive, this Beautiful. specimen. It caught my eye immediately when I walked in this room. Also, it's on a fine contrast of brown limonite, so the, this gold just shoots right off the, the color. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. That's totally different. Yes, uh, isn't this fantastic? Totally crystallized there. Yeah, wire. And what mind is this? This looks California. What it is it? It is also an Australian oh, specimen. Australia. Yes, okay. Yes. You know, it's rare to see the crystallized go from Australia compared to the nuggets it that have come out. It is one of our favorite pieces Very we rare. Have, and it's so nice. Oh, yes, that's fantastic. It's so sweet. It's like a. I mean, they are all like little pieces of art, aren't they? And you would the never truth? see another one like it. Yeah, that's for sure. Yes. Before I go, <laughs> yeah. I do have one mystery specimen for you. Oh, you told me that in the beginning. Yeah, I'm oh, going to okay. just hand you over this mystery specimen. It's either a zircon or a cassiterite, perhaps. Have you ever seen know. anything even to approach that? Never. It's a giant cassiterite crystal. It is cassiterite. Okay. Because yeah. the secondary entrance yeah, is just exactly. an incredible specimen. My God, because it was so heavy. So I got it on the second. It had, uh, because I've seen zircons with this type of termination. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more moldable here, faces and everything. I've never seen a cassiterite look like this. God, that's, and where's this from? It's from China. It came out about okay, 20 years ago. Okay, from uh, China. Okay. Because they produce wonderful cassiterites, but nothing like this. I've never seen anything like no, that. No, me I mean, that really throws you. Ian, wonderful. Thanks, David. Keep up the good work. It's always a pleasure to come in your room. You've always got new things to show us, which is so important. Good. Good work. Keep it up. Thanks, David. Wolfgang, how, how are you doing? doing? Nice to meet Karen, you. how are hey, you? Dave. Nice to see you. I nice to see you again. I think it seemed like I saw you last week, and the last time I saw you was in uh, Munich. Yes. Well, that's great. And uh, were you able to pick up some new things to show us for of this course. year? Of course, yes. Yeah. That's a fabulous silver crystals after discrocyte. Yes. You see the herring bones oh, here? Oh, fabulous yes. thing. I'm going to it's rotate this because all specimen. the way around this thing is yes. extraordinary. Yes. You see here the white calcite, and on the back side you see um, native arsenic here. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's native arsenic. That's native oh, arsenic. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm glad you pointed that out. I thought it was some kind of a black chert of some sort. Yes. So that that's fabulous. <laughs> So it's a pseudomorph. Yes. That is great. 
this is crystallite, crystallized this bismuth. This is native yes. bismuth. Native, no yes. su uh, no pseudomorph. It's uh, nope. were native nope. bismuth crystals. This habit is different than the ones from Germany. Where is this from? It's from Schlema, from the Opel mine. In what the country? Uh, in Saxony. 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 Yes, okay, um, I'm trying yes. to think the ones that I saw. They're a different habit, but this is nice. This is a totally different habit. Yes, and they're not uh, etched like um, a plenty of those um, material. Um, this uh, have been fresh crystals. Okay. Yes, they are only a little bit cleaned. And, it's beautiful. Uh, yes. That's a really good specimen. Oh, sharp, fantastic! Uh, crystals, yeah. Yes. And the, the, for my opinion, the luster is very, very good. Very, very fine. This is um, a specimen I purchased um, with the Wendland collection um, a couple of months before. Um, a specimen uh, which was um, uh, came into the Wendland collection in the end of the 60s. Oh. Yes, and um, it was good luck that it was inside the collection. Oh, it's fantastic. Yes. I love this whole cluster. That's why I'm showing them this direction here. It's on a little bit of matrix there. Yes. Also the contrast. That little white, yeah, yes. the contrast, white dolomite crystal, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I love those fresh oh, yeah. Christmas crystals. But once again, here's a fine assemblage of three superb examples of that native silver. And uh, uh, th these are the silver that they had to make sure and retest to make sure that they were legitimate yes. and that the final outcome is that they are real. Yes, yeah. of course they Some are people, real. the rumor got out that they're, they, that, that uh, they for, my, for me, there are no doubts that they are, um, that they are real. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And um, the latest tests are saying that, they are, that the Saxony silvers are real. Yes. And yeah. um, also I have some new information about the uh, Moroccan silvers that there should be um, found blocks of 10 tons with those melted acanthite. Oh. So we, we work on this um, to um, give the evidence for those um, Moroccan silvers Very too. Very good. Yes. Yeah. But at the moment we know that 99.99% um, .99 of those Saxony silver is no fake. Very good. That's great. Here I show you a very nice pseudomorphos of tenantite after energite okay. from Yolkani with huge crystals. Wow, look at that. Tenantite Ten after, what is it? After energite. Energite. Yes. Boy, that's a different pseudomorph. Holy yes. cow, that's a wonderful. I item. think it was described a couple of years ago in the mineral electric mineralogical oh, okay. record. Yes. Celestine from Poland. Oh. Terry? There I got it. Beautiful. From Poland. From Poland, yes. Holy cow. It's perfect. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that's what the f fun of this is to get capture all these new specimens. <laughs> you wonder when this was last photographed. Uh, was it from a private collection or a museum at one time? It was from a private collection. Private collection. And yeah. Before it was in a museum. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. From Poland. Yes. Very unusual in this quality. Yeah. My father-in-law was uh, in the past there for 30, 40 times wow. at the mine, and never he discovered you uh, see a that? specimen this size. Yes. Yeah. That's fantastic. Celestine from Poland. It was called the rocket in the Meyer collection. Okay. Didi Meyer was a federal judge in Germany, mm. and I purchased his collection one and a half years um, before. That is wonderful. There's, these are no repairs. Yeah, that's uh, not repair. It's just uh, a cloudiness yes, in yes. there. I, would, yeah. with the, I looked at it um, under the microscope. Yes. And um, it was totally unrepaired. Yeah. 
put, I'll tell you, in New Mexico, the, the smoky quartzes of different types have also have jab twin law crystals. And uh, this is the first long crystal like this with a cluster of smaller crystals at the base, like matrix. This is the first one I've seen of this type. Yes. Not to say there are other out there, but th this is an extraordinary museum piece. Yeah, I really like that. Then the the um, smokiness ends and it's, uh, it goes into colorless or very light smoky at the top. That's neat. Yeah. That division there at the very top. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Yes. I really have to congratulate you. You're doing thank a you. good job. Thank you. Yeah, you're, oh, thanks you're a lot. digging <laughs> these things out and, and uh, you're so friendly and nice to everybody. <laughs> you're doing you. a good job. I appreciate that. I thank you. I appreciate yeah. your um, compliments. <laughs> Keep okay. up the good work. Thanks thank a you. lot. Take care. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, hey, Dave, good to see you. This is an amazing piece. It's actually out of the Ben Williams collection. Okay. Now, Ben Williams was the mine manager at Bisbee, but oh, okay. his father uh, managed mines in Michigan. So, okay. Uh, and, and he grew up in Michigan. So this would have come from that time prior to him moving to Arizona and I taking over at Bisbee. Very and there good. was about 12 or 15 pieces in the mm -hmm. Ben Williams collection, and this was the finest one. Beautiful. This is superb. One of the other fine specimens I like to point out is these Milpias ash. There you go. We've talked about them before. Yes. But this one's fantastic because it's got the little ball of malachite. You got it. That's a beauty. Look at that thing. And, uh, well, it happens to be this is the year that these killers are starting to show up, at least uh, for the public to enjoy seeing them and for us to be able to film them because they talked about this major find, but not too many actually showed up at the show. They, but they, most of them were sold beforehand or on the it. table. You got and it. So you're right, this was sold directly to Ron right after it you came see out that? of the ground. You see that? And so it didn't even make it to the Tucson show yeah. or the Denver show. I exactly. don't remember exactly when he bought it, but uh, you yeah. know, it came from the mine. It was sourced and it went right into his collection. These are hard to get hard now. To get oh my goodness, that's a, a, a superb example. Holy cow, if they didn't get one of these, they should get this. That's wonderful. That's one because that, a batch came out, but yeah. it wasn't really a huge pocket. No, I didn't see one, that many. It was one special pocket. Yeah. I don't know exactly how many there were, but yeah. definitely less than a hundred, which is not very many. Oh yeah, and most of them had damage. What's nice about That's this one is right. these, this has very little damage, if none at all. Yes, and um, it's really well perched right you on top got it. of the still bites. And yes, that's right. It's just a fantastic piece. Yeah. New pocket, so, very good. And what is the blue on this? That's uh, Shattuckite. Shattuckite, very good. Because there's the darker here and the lighter. It's also very With the beautiful. matrix, it's got the, the contrast. It's got yeah. the Shattuckite inside the quartz here, you can see. Oh, which is yes, quite, very much so. Included into the quartz. I love the contrast set up here. All crystallized. Yeah, that's a neat specimen. It's, it's a fantastic Burmese topaz yes, matrix. Yes, that's wonderful. Look at this, that cluster. It has a, a, a nice little tint to it. Yeah, it's got a nice, that yellowish tone. I only know about four or five pieces with that color. Most of them are that this champagne. This is beautiful. Brown. This has that hint of yellow gold. It's calcite, it. isn't this? No, this is all sitting on another topaz crystal. Oh, it's a topaz. Okay. Yeah. And you can see it's, it's oh, been yeah. rehealed here all okay. over. Okay. Is that a single one back there? Yep, from the same pocket, the same inclusion. color. Look at that. That's beautiful. Look at the inclusion of that. You know, that's exciting that they're, they're coming out with this tint to them. That's, yeah. that's really neat. This is a Savorite from Miralani from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And that's a color. Would you believe? I a green, emerald green sapphire. No, no, Savorite. Savorite, there you go. Garnet. It's a weird Oh, that's shape. a very fine crystal as well. My God, that's a hell of a thing. Yeah, that's beautiful. This is from Kazakhstan. Okay, yeah, they've been getting the, yeah, look at that. That's a beautiful thing, perfect miniature. An okay. Alexanderite from Zimbabwe. 
That's a really nice oh, one because I'm matrix. Good. Sure is. And what is this matrix? Uh, Muscovite schist. Kind of a biotite yeah, type of thing. Oh, yeah, there's the six lane there. You see the six lane there. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes, Dave, if we go back in the back here, we have a few things to look at. Oh, okay. Very good. I'll follow you. This is a very special Ooh. bornonite on Ooh, pyrite. Love it. Look at Bolivia. this thing. Oh, that's a killer. Look at this thing. The sharpness, the size on matrix, perfect miniature. These came out of an old collection. I got two Sumeb pieces. Mm -hmm. And I'll start Ooh, with this first nice one. Cerusi. This is a Cerusi on the pink purple Smithsonite. Wow, that's wonderful. That is really choice. Reticulated and with the pink Smithsonite. That's a wonderful combination. This is a very large size. Oh, yeah. The, this is a very typical, superb specimen of this type of azurite with the malachite growing in a classic. When you look at this specimen, you know this is Sumeb. That is definitely Sumeb written all over it. Beautiful. This is the famous Graham Pocket oh, Rhodochrosite. Very good. Anytime um, these come up, boy, they're so desirable with the tetrahedrite, sweet home Rhodochrosite. Absolutely. Just a beautiful piece. You can never piece. get enough of these. This is a, just a oh, jewel. Oh yeah, look at that, the, the schwanning. The little miniature schwanning. Boy, these are hard to get nowadays. Yeah, perfect. Uh, they used to call it a, a toenail size. It's not thumbnail, it's a little larger than thumbnail. Now they call it small miniature. They, they did away the, mm -hmm. the, the rules of the Federation, California National Federation. Now it's called a small miniature. Double terminated, Double uh, smoky with the terminalines on each side. Another one jetting out there. Class. That's what you call a classy. This is what you call small hand size specimen. A little larger than miniature, but that, that is a fine small hand size specimen. Here's from an Columbia. emerald from Columbia. Now this, what's, I think I own this one time. I think this was mine at one time. Guarantee, because I had one that had good crystallization like this. Here's the new Mexican. Oh, and beautiful, I, um, the Malachite. with Malachite. That's I'd a love beautiful this one. miniature. It's, it's perfect. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Perfect specimen. Oh, absolutely. No damage. Beautiful. See what luster. I mean by a miniature with yep. a bornonite and this? Mm -hmm. And oh my God, you can build a collection right here at the show. Yep. I love this piece. This piece is an amazing. Galena from oh, Nordoff, Germany. Oh, yeah, Nordoff is always highly demanded with the Siderite and quite typical Nordoff. Germany uh, uh, Galena specimen. And you get in small size with one big subject Galena. That, that, that's very choice. Very and choice. this one's really three-dimensional. A lot of them are oh, very yeah. flat. That's and, right. uh, I don't particularly like the flat ones, but yeah. this one's got it's such got a nice three-dimension and very perfect and Very beautiful. aesthetic, yeah. And these are very old specimens. Classics. Oh, hey. Proustite. This is a Proustite from Chile. Yep. This was in my father's collections for years and years. This looks familiar. Yep. I've and, seen this. And Ron somehow got it out of him. Oh, okay. And then uh, we're, uh, we're moving Ron's collection, so uh, this piece is now available. You which see is that? Quite rare. I think it's actually sold already. But uh, I say. That's I one. That's, to feature a, it on that's a hell of a what's fine hot in Tucson, Proustite. That's a beautiful yeah. one. Chile? Yep. Yeah. And the thing of it is that uh, these things are so hard to get, you never, they're not producing this stuff. They no. haven't produced it in years. years to get years. them out of a collection, that's that, yeah. That's basically that won't your last. only other option. That's it. It won't last. And here's the, here's the last, last thing. thing. This is an oh, old Oro Preto yeah. oh, topaz. No, I'm going to explain yeah. something to these people. <laughs> okay, this is what you call true normal imperial topaz. This is the, what they refer to in the gem trade as a topaz, imperial topaz, and it has to have the red with the orange. Not just the red. The red is very hard to get. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not putting down red uh, topaz, especially those real cherry reds. They're very, very valuable and very hard to get. But this is the normal imperial topaz, birthstone for November. Look at that thing. See, that's, a, that's, a, that's what it's all about. It's right what you're seeing. 
It has the red with the orange, so that's a superb crystal. Exceptional specimen. Dave, I need you to hold it. The rock is a piece. He had dozens of big ones. He was running for a presidential intimate site. I know. And he had no control over it. Look at that top. There's a stone there in the top, I can see. Okay, you can it. cut a stone out of that top. All right, Dave, let's yeah. sit in the back here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that thanks was wonderful. a lot. So, Rich, have you found anything here at, uh, at the show? What's... It's never difficult, Dave. Yeah. All these dealers out here westward look have the greatest things you'll ever spot. But every now and then you do find an unusual or exceptional specimen, even among what they've got. And yeah. I think I've got a good one to show you. Yeah, that's where you're mentioning. See what you got there. All right. A surprise. Ooh, that's a sapphire crystal. Right. Wow. I'm like most that are either light colored or beat up a little bit from being rolled around in a creek somewhere. This one is as clean as they ever get and a beautiful dark blue color. You're not kidding. Which makes it unusual. Up. And as you guys know, I collect thumbnails and I that's think that's right. about as good as they get. That, I've know. never seen a better sharp crystal than that. And that's a. I bought that within 15 oh, minutes of showing up here this morning. Wow. So I encourage everyone to come by Westford Look when they get oh, out. Oh, absolutely. That is it's what I call glassy. Yeah, glassy. No erosion whatsoever that took place on it. See, if that was on a pedestal, it could show it bad, but here, at least you can get it. Oh, yeah. it's getting it in its raw state today, right? Yeah. Right out sitting right. on the wall of the Westward Look. Why you roll it over oh. a little bit? All right. There you go. There. Oop, oop. Still moved. <laughs> there we go. That's good. Good for you. Wouldn't that be terrible if somebody got that and cut it right Oh, well, we don't do that. Yeah, we, exactly. That's our job. That's, that's right. That stuff. That's, you got it, Rich. Elaine, how you doing? I'm fine. Yourself? I'm doing all right. Here I have an old timer from uh, Diamantina, Brazil. It's a, a quartz. Beautiful. They call them cathedral quartz, I think. Yes. Uh, with some microcline and some uh, al albite epitaxial growth on the microcline. Yes. It's an old timer with no damage, no repair, which is quite unusual now. Yes. Uh, very aesthetic, very Beautiful. big size, ni nice architecture. I have also an old timer from 1963 found in M. Fouati in the former French Congo. It's a complete twin of cerusite. Very good, cerusite, it's beautiful. Six months ago, I think there's a few discovery of uh, new things, uh -huh. but nothing reach uh, the size of that one. Oh, it's wonderful. And I can uh, show you some hidden things, okay. which are in boxes. All right. I bring some French Ooh. specimen. This is a That's a very nice autunite from. Uh, oh, do I like that? I can use this. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know that you're a collector <laughs> yeah, of yeah, radioactive I'm a collector. minerals. That's a killer. Look at the color of that yeah. autunite. This is this is from a small mine not very far from the famous Marniac near Limoges on the uh, north west, west of uh, Massif Central. And uh, the name of that mine is Penny. It's, it's from uh, 1968. Okay. And uh, only one small discovery. Wow. Because everything was used uh, as ore at that time. Yeah, sure. But the color is absolutely wonderful. Speaks for itself. It's wonderful. Tense yellow green. This is a new oh. discovery from this. Morocco. Oh, for Pete's sake, look at that. But the what is crystal. nice on the, uh, that specimen are the crystals uncovered by azurite. Yes. And those are covered by azurite. And that one like a V. Yeah. It's wonderful. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful specimen? It has a nice contrast. Yeah. And where's this from? Uh, from uh, MCC in Morocco. Morocco. Very good. This is another French classic. Okay. Ooh, la that. A blue fluorite from Le Bex. Wonderful. Now, when did this come out? Uh, the mine was closed and flooded in 1971, so okay. this is the late 60s. Yeah, I got you. That's a beautiful thing. I've seen a small, uh, uh, fine miniature, but this in the cabinet size is wonderful. Look at the shade of that blue. 
And Beautiful. You can see there's a first generation growth yes. of purple fluorite, a big octahedron that you can see a little bit here. It's yeah. covered by uh, small uh, quartzes and you have a second generation uh, light blue, uh, very, very transparent crystals. Certainly is. Let's stay with oh, other French fluorite. Beautiful. This is Puy saint gulnier It's a small vein near Lebex, 12 kilometers from Lebex, and it has never been mined, um, used as a mine. Okay. Um, it's on only one research gallery, and these were, were found uh, in 1979. Only one pocket. Kill Unbelievable. Killer blue. The color of this is just extraordinary. Now what is this? Wow. This is a rare mineral. Uh, the name is plumbogumite. Mm. It's uh, close to pyromorphite with okay. uh, water uh, in the uh, in the mineral. Um, the the water. Yeah, the water is inside the, the oh. chemistry. Uh, okay. Of the, mineral. the water content. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. The very classic uh, place is um, Ruftangil in Cum Cumberland, uh, former Cumberland, uh, north of England. Mm. And this one came uh, one single pocket in 1982 in Baden-Weiler in the Black Forest, wow. Germany. And wow. It's pseudomorph after barite. Okay. And look at that. Oh, it's fabulous. Look at how blue that is. Translucency to it. Another cool specimen from France. Okay. It's balls of barite from okay. Les Malines. Okay. And Beautiful. these are not very rare, but that one with the four small balls one, two, exactly three. on one line. This. So cool, so unusual. It's like somebody placed them on there. Yeah. Isn't that the neatest thing? Yeah, that's really cool. This is a pre night from Mali. Beautiful, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Fine, translucent. Boy, that has a lot of character to it, the specimen. <laughs> Isn't that something? Look at that. And an old timer from Sicily, from the sulfur mine. I'll let you hold that because it's yes, heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. look at that. And that be, oh, it has it's some sulfur in there, too. Blue celestite yeah. with a few sulfur. Yeah. From the classic mine where the big yeah. uh, and nice crystals can yeah. come. Okay. Beautiful. It's extremely in, big and shining for the place. Yeah, I and where is this from? Uh, the, mi the name of the mine is La Grasta Mine in Sicily. Very good. Beautiful. Laurent, very good. Thank they you always very have much, something Dave. beautiful and special to show us each year. We really my, appreciate it. My yeah. pleasure. You Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Dave. How, having fun, and how did you like setting up it? It's quite a job for you. Yeah, one of the advantages I have is that I have the same cases at home. Okay. So I was able okay. to mock out the, the whole display yes. and get a feel for it, get comfortable with it, uh, and then look at it for about a month before I packed it and brought good it here. Good for you. Very so, good planning. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, was, it was fun. It was, uh, and one of the things I did was I tried to bring my whole case. You do have some minerals in there that really grab my eye. You have, first of all, let me say this, you have a beautiful exhibit. Needless Thank to you say, you wouldn't be Thank up here showing the collection if it was just less stuff and what have you. Uh, if it was an educational collection, uh, that's highly important mm -hmm. regardless. If it's a collection that uh, a certain group of collectors can only afford certain things, I have to respect that mm -hmm. if they had an exhibit like that down the road sometime. But you have what I call a very very beautiful, colorful, general collection of minerals. Yes. Beautiful. And some of them are quite significant. Uh, one you. of the things I did notice immediately when I looked in the case on the right at the lower level was a rutile from Georgia that they call the drill bit type styling, yeah. not the crystallization. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful specimen. I have a close friend of mine purchased that from the uh, former mine manager uh, shortly before his eviction. 
from the little uh, on-site building there. <laughs> uh, you know, he's like, I think he sold it as he was packing the, the truck or that kind of thing. Uh, uh, but yeah, I acquired that specimen back in about 1983. Okay. Um, so that was one of my favorite specimens. It's a, a beautiful piece. Um, Nice large faces. It it actually has so much luster you could shave out of it. Yeah, it's fabulous. It's almost like a mirror. Yeah. And it, and one of the things too, it really has that deep red luster, that interior color. Exactly. Uh, one thing that um, uh, I liked about the collection is the arrangement and the the, the color. You mm -hmm. did a beautiful job in the setup and that that the aesthetics of the case. I think that makes a case. big difference. Big I think difference, it's difficult yeah. for people to look at, at minerals or, or any collectible, any item, if it's uh, arranged in sort of a hod hodgepodge manner where mm -hmm. there's no consistency. So I try to to have things that balance color, balance form, balance texture. Right. So that as you're looking at something, there seems to be a flow across the shelf, That's right. a flow across the case. Uh, colors are, are put in to direct your eyes to certain right. areas. That's and so right. I think people, the collection uh, becomes more aesthetic as a group. While you can appreciate individual pieces, you can also appreciate the case as a whole. It's, it's the kind of thing that draws you to it. That's right. Uh, color, uh, we all love color, especially yeah, the reds and you know, yeah, the bright that's colors. It's human like nature, that. yeah. Right. Uh, so it, it's fun to set it up. Uh, right. And I had a lot of fun at home mocking it up and switching all the pieces around yeah. and being as anal as humanly possible oh, about that, it. That, that, that really <laughs> is nice. Now, how long have you been collecting? Well, I uh, actually started as a child collecting. Okay. Uh, like me. My parents uh, uh, purchased uh, various uh, uh, sort of skill craft uh, information books that had rocks included in them. Uh, and I used to do a lot of fossil collecting in my okay. grandfather's driveway. He had a crushed limestone driveway, and they're walking around picking up crinoids and brachiopods so and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I can hear him now telling you, you know, put them all back. You're taking my whole driveway oh. home. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, when I uh, went to uh, started at Cleveland or uh, University of Kansas, and then went on to Cleveland State, and when I was involved at oh. Cleveland State, we had a very active geology club. Now, is that the town of Cleveland? Yeah, Cleveland, George? Ohio. Oh, Cleveland, Cleveland Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Yeah, Cleveland State University. I'm born. Yeah, that's, that's you and I both hometown. lived there. How about that? And, um, and so we had a very active geology club, and we took every opportunity mm. we could to go field collecting, uh, whether it was in North Carolina, New Jersey, Arkansas, Arkansas, or up in the Sudbury region of Canada. Very good. Uh, we were very active, sometimes with professors, sometimes not, but yeah. uh, almost always on the dole of the club. We would uh, sell rocks and so forth at well, shows in the, in the uh, student center and try to raise funds and do bake sales and so forth. But. Um, yeah, it, uh, that was my, I, probably about 1986, 87, I started really acquiring material, spending money, starting to build the collection. And at that time, I had a collection that was just pretty rocks. You know, oh, I like this, oh, I like that. And I still tried mm -hmm. to get those things that I didn't think were plentiful. Unique things, whether they were rodentites from Peru or whatever, you know, beautiful things that I felt were more significant than just you know, a, a fluorite from exactly. location A or whatever. And then with time, I, I started to get this feeling that I, I wanted something more meaningful as a group. Uh, rather than sort of a hodgepodge collection, sort of shotgun blast wherever, uh, I thought, well, you know, if I focus on a single thing, uh, in the end, the collection as a whole will be meaningful. These things will, uh, will as a group, will represent uh, not only an effort, but a, of a, a collection of beautiful things from one location. Exactly. And so uh, my favorite pieces were U.S. pieces at the time okay. in my collection. So uh, you know, from about 97 to about 2005, or 2002, excuse me, about a five-year period, okay. I slowly s traded things off, sold things off. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in a hurry. I had things I loved, and I wasn't going to just turn the collection over immediately. Nothing good is built overnight. It takes time, that, it takes effort. Correct. Absolutely. And you have to have a very deliberate plan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I used what I had, and mm -hmm. also the appreciation curve of some of these things, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to ups upsell myself or up buy uh, for pieces in the U.S. Uh, collection. And so uh, in the last uh, 11 years, Actually, since 97, all I've acquired are American pieces. Wow. So for okay. about the last uh, 16 years or so. Well, good for you. Um, and uh, again, like I said, some of them I've had some, since the early 80s. 
but for one reason or another, attached to a field collecting buddy or yeah. something. But so right right around the '80s is when you really kind of got into it. Then, yeah, you would say. yeah. I'd say the mid '80s is when I would actually spend money. I on see. It. You know, it's, yeah, you know, exactly. my collection went from you know pretty things I collected yeah. to pretty things I purchased. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, I understand you work for a company that uh, is in the mineral business. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your thinking about what comes through the company itself and your access to getting these minerals? Uh, how, how do you handle yourself opposed to somebody that just is out there trying to get minerals, whether he's buying it from at a show or what have mm -hmm. you. What influence does it well, have? Well, I, I know I see more things yes, than the average that's person. Right. I, I, it helps to build the context. But I still think that that's an important aspect of any collector. Yeah, you know, they need to be slow. They need to be deliberate. Um, and you know the, the whole idea of you know one great thing, one unique thing versus a, a, a number of placeholders, uh, should be a focus for most collectors. Uh, you know, it's to have significant collections, you have to have significant pieces. Those pieces aren't readily available whether you have access in the hobby or not. So it, you, when you uh, get to a point where you can get something like that, or you see something like that, that's when you need to pull the trigger, uh, and. Those pieces are there. There's here at the Westward Look. There's you know 30 plus dealers, and I'm sure there's something that I would love in almost every one of those rooms. And you know you just have to prioritize. You have to take your time. And uh, you know the fact that I'm in the business sometimes uh, allows me uh, to be a little bit jaded towards what I think you know is a right. really great oh, specimen. Yeah, sure. Uh, but uh, you know it's I would tell any collector that you know. Be deliberate, uh, get context, spend the time to read. Uh, right. Whether it's one of the mineralogical records, rocks and minerals, or you know, an umpteen number of uh, quality books that That's have been right. published on, on minerals. Uh, take your time, inform yourself, and then when you do have the opportunity, trust yourself and pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Because that piece, if it's really that good, won't be there tomorrow. That's right. And uh, you know, one of the things that I did when I was younger, uh, I would go through and make my list. And I learned that I had really good taste because I would make this list. And then as I went back through the show the second time, gone, 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 yeah. gone. Yeah. And so you, you start to go, well, I obviously have a good eye. And then you just have to learn to trust yourself. You know, spending all your money on the first day is not a bad thing. Uh, because chances are you obtain things that wouldn't be around on day two. Yeah, or even late in the day on the, sec on the first day. Yeah. And so it just confidence. Uh, and that comes from uh, in being informed. That's right. You know, there's nothing the like information and education. The more you can learn, the better you are. And, you know, that's, it's sort of, it should be fun. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if, if you're doing this as a hobby, then in, in involving yourself into the literature mm -hmm. should be part of the hobby. That's right, very so. much so. Takes a lot and a lot of dedication and you have to learn the various uh, divisions of minerals because uh, what, what I'm trying to uh, convey as a message on what's hot in Tucson to a lot of the collectors of today is the various levels of collecting. We must respect all levels of collecting, well, right to the inexpensive, think, yeah, right up to the best. I think my collection reflects that too. You know, there are uh, beautiful gold specimens that have significant value to them. There's a, uh, a beautiful marcasite uh, on Chert Matrix from Bell County, Texas. Not a significantly expensive, but, but for a mineral, for an example of that mineral, it's world class. Exactly. I don't think you could do better That's right. whether you got one from France or any of the other famous mm -hmm. locations. Right. These things yeah. are unique. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of what that's sort of the fun part that's right. of something like this. It's sort of a challenge to find those pieces that transcend location. That's right. Uh, and no matter where you're from, no matter what is ever found in the world, great new great things could be found tomorrow. That's right. But these, because of their form, their uniqueness, will always be considered incredible examples that of whatever that true. mineral species is. That's and there's nothing wrong with white and black and brown minerals. Very much you so. You know, uh, I think any collection that's truly representative of a location or, uh, you know, any kind of group, unless you're collecting barrels or something like that. Right, specializing. Um, yes, uh, but any kind of locations uh, collection needs to show 
the diversity of that location. Very much and, so. And, and those aren't always bright red and green minerals. That is correct, know? yeah. Because so. I've always preached that a lot of people kind of look down on the rarity minerals. Oh, they're just mm -hmm. kind of, they're, they're, they're looking for these big aesthetic, gorgeous, right. big, which is fine. You right. know, nothing right. wrong with that. But the uh, way I looked at it uh, when I was building my collections is that I always like to spice it up with rarity uh, just to add spice to it, that this is a mm -hmm. very rare mineral you're looking at, yeah. much rarer than the species over there that's a big showpiece. I had everything. a discussion with a gentleman this morning who was looking at a, a manganite I have from the Montreal mine in Wisconsin. And he looks at it and he says, oh, that's beautiful, but that's from Ilfeld. And I said, no, it, it's from the Montreal mine. Oh, no, no, no. If it's that good, it has to be Ilfeld. And I'm like, no, it's the Montreal <laughs> mine in Wisconsin. I said it was Herb Abota's piece, and I, so I'm pretty confident of the location information. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, uh, okay, well, it looks like the ones from Ilfeld. <laughs> I said, well, that I could agree with. That yeah. I have no problem with. Kevin, what is your opinion about what's happening with minerals, being that you work for this company and, and you see a lot, you know what's going on, and it happens to be a very prominent company. And uh, what is your opinion about uh, what you feel the future holds for our hobby? I, I think nothing but the ceiling. Uh, not only the involvement in, in uh, more entities, auction houses and so forth, uh, but the the valuation of minerals are are permitting people to mine exclusively for specimens. That's right. And that, I think this is probably the first time in history people are able to do that on a larger scale. Uh, starting with Brian's operation of the Sweet Home back in the 90s all the way through current operations in Southern California with Bill Larson and others. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think that it will probably be the best time ever to be a mineral collector. Um, my owners are much more sensitive to saving specimens. They understand that something that may, they may only get a dollar a ton for, they can get a $10,000 a pound for. Uh, and, and since everybody is, you know, in, the, in that whole world is, is economically driven, uh, this adds a, a nice little sidelight to that for those mine owners and, and miners in general to. Uh, uh, to expand their own pocketbook, but also to provide us choices that we may never have had. Right. I also think that with the, uh, the expansion of China and other locations, and this, again, the, uh, the understanding of specimen collection, you know, most of the great mines in Europe or the United States were hit at a time where the oxide zones and other zones were rapidly ex excavated through or blasted That's through. Right. And specimen collection, with some exceptions like Bisbee and others, was very few and far between. Uh, you may have one or two representative, or in some cases no representative samples from a mining operation uh, because they were either wildcat mines or, or whatever, and these people had to make money. So if they were going for gold, they didn't care about the roto, exactly. or they didn't care about the secondary materials. They were going after whatever it was that they were economically driven for. Exactly. Uh, today, uh, both the internet and uh, publications and information that's available to these people, they can sit in a hut in the Himalayas, get on a satellite laptop, see yeah. that this stuff sells, it's and then amazing. go out and get it. That's right. Uh, and so. I don't think there's ever been a time with the, with the transparency in pricing because the, both the pe person at the mine, all the, every collector, everybody can investigate what what these things could sell for. Uh, you can go to shows and see it, but you can also do this on, you know online and have right. and, and inform yourself yeah. long before you show. Everybody's up, so. being informed. Yeah, and and I, nothing like an informed public uh, to help build something like this, and, and so. Uh, I think the appreciation of these items, not as rock, not as something that you find in your garden, but as extremely unique, individual pieces of natural art. Absolutely. Every single one. Uh, I can you know, take even a, a Rembrandt and stick it on a copy machine and produce a hundred and, and put them in a frame all over the world. Exactly. I can't do that with a Rota. Yeah. I can't do that with a pyromorphite. Right. I can't do that with a quartz. Right. That piece is uniquely that specimen. That's right. And that's, there is no other. That's Even right. in things like uh, Illinois fluorites or, or Chinese fluorites where they produced hundreds and hundreds of tons, thousands of tons of mm -hmm. material. 
there are those that are so unique. Yeah, they right. are the individual. You know, you, you still have, I always call it, the, the difference between the Rembrandt and the dogs playing poker. You know, <laughs> you still have the dogs playing poker, okay? That's still available. And, and those things, for what they are, great representative They'll always things. be around okay. for the lower. You know, I've got a dog playing poker, playing poker in my garage. That's okay? right. Okay, all right, there's a place for those. Uh, but uh, the availability uh, of these great specimens, and one of the things I didn't mention, was the laboratories and the prep, and the, not just the specimen recovery techniques with diamond chainsaws and so forth, mm -hmm. but the, the great laboratories that exist Very across so. the country That's to right. help you know, isolate these beautiful crystals to remove damaged areas, yeah. to take large, what we used to call large clunkers, right. and turn them into absolutely incredible specimens right. to isolate those, those few pieces on there that, that are not just representative, but mm -hmm. A mind blowing. Can, could be the best yes, at the end. Exactly. It's possible exactly. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that and that has really allowed us all to appreciate the things even more. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you know, you maybe you want a couple little broken pieces or I don't know. But you know, the it's uh uh, you can really get fine pieces with the ability of these, yeah, these people, that, very what they're a, able to do today. What they call cleaning and trimming of specimens exactly. to improve them that to, to the right size and mm -hmm. what have you. So the hobby has a lot to offer and as people such as yourself and others that uh, have uh, really helped our hobby and make it grow and, and that the world of communication, that, I mean, it's, it's really, really remarkable what's happened. And a lot of people say, oh, the minerals are going up so high and everything. No, no but it reflects the difficulty. I mean, one of my favorite lines is when I'm standing in front of a case, someone will walk in and they'll say, wow. Look how fragile that is. Oh my gosh, how did they ever get that out of the ground? Mm -hmm. How'd they get it across the ocean to here? How did they do this? Wow, look how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. Now you know how the effort that it took to get it out of the ground, to get it trimmed, to get it across the ocean, to get it on the right. stand in front of you here exactly. at Tucson. Exactly. You know, that there's a lot of effort and, and with effort comes cost. That's right. And, and, but that cost also encourages people to then go out and find more. That's right. And that benefits all of us. Yeah, very true. Well, thank you very sure. much. Thank you, Dave. Good interview, and I appreciate it. Sure. Good luck with your show, and can continue the good work. Thank you yeah. very much. I'm glad you appreciate the collection. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Very nice. Yeah. Very